Greetings, Life Sciences, Grade 12 learners. We are carrying on with our revision for Paper 2. In our last lesson, we were looking at DNA code of life. Now we are going to proceed with meiosis. Now with meiosis, it is very important that you know the events at each phase and most importantly, you need to focus on the behavior of the chromosomes. If we are saying metaphase one, what is happening to the chromosomes at metaphase one? They are in homologous pairs and they are lined up at the equator um, of the cell. So it's very important that you are saying that homologous chromosomes in metaphase one are in pairs. So we look at the behavior. You need to be able to tell the difference between the centriole and the centromere. Where the centriole, you will find it at the poles of the, of the cell and it is the structure uh, or the organelle that forms the spindle fibers. Whereas the centromere is what holds the two chromatids of a um, of a chromosome. So let us look at this example. So I'm not going to go through the whole process of, um, of, of meiosis. You should know it by now. So we are going to apply it to the questions that we usually get in the examination. As you will see, this question is a question from question 1.4. Remember I said that in section A, you will also get data response questions. So this is the kind of a question that you will get in section A. It doesn't require you to give long answers, but you need to respond to the diagram that you are given there. Now here it tells you that the first thing you can see there that it's saying to you that this diagram, it represents an early stage of meiosis. Now you already know your stages, the sequence of your stages in meiosis. We start with prophase, we come to metaphase, and we have anaphase, and we have telophase. But in meiosis, remember, we have got two divisions. We have meiosis one and we have meiosis two. So it's very important in meiosis that you label in which stage of meiosis the phase you are talking about it's in. Like for example here, it's showing us an early stage of meiosis. Now we need to see and look at that diagram to determine what is the stage that they are talking about there. Now immediately when you are looking at this diagram, you can see your chromosomes. You can see your chromosomes, they are in homologous pairs. So that is happening during which phase? It is happening during prophase one. Okay. And what else can you see that says that this is prophase one? Remember I said it's very important for you to note the behavior of chromosomes in that particular stage. Here you can see that the chromosomes are in pairs. If they ask you, why do you say it is, um, it is prophase one? They're not going to ask you that question in, in section A. They can ask it in section B. Now you have got um, your, your, your homologous chromosomes or your chromosomes are in pairs there. You can also see here that this part is showing disintegration. So there is a disintegration here. of the nuclear membrane. That is just to say that you can identify that this is a, this is prophase one, but it's not asked in the question because this is section A, but it, I'm just looking at you now getting the same diagram in section B. So I'm just going to erase all of that um, for, for us to proceed with the questions that are asked here. Now it says, give the phase of meiosis represented. I've already said that it is prophase one. The number of chromatids. It says, what is the number of chromatids? 
Now, what do we know? That um, one chromosome, chromosome has two chromatids. Now, if you go to your diagram, you will see that there are how many chromosomes here? There are, there's one, there's chromosome one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six. Now, each of those chromosomes is having how many chromatids? It's having two. So that means that the chromatids for this one will be 12 because we are having um, six chromosomes. Now, it's asking you, Number of homologous chromosome pairs. That is very important. It's not saying the number of homologous chromosomes, but it's asking for the number of homologous chromosome pairs. Now, when we go to our diagram, let me just wrap out what I've written there for the numbers um, so that you can see clearly. Um, now, it's asking for the pairs. Now, this is one chromosome, and next to it, there is another chromosome. So they make a pair. So that will be pair number one. And this also is another pair. So that's pair number two. And that one is our pair number three. So your answer here is three pairs. Learners who gave us six, they didn't get the mark because it was not asking for the number of homologous chromosomes. It was asking for the pairs. So it's very important. Uh, quickly, without wasting time, let us look at the next question. It says, let's identify the structure R, which I have already labeled there. That structure R is actually a nuclear uh, membrane. Now, many learners, they don't know what is the difference between a nuclear membrane and a nuclear and a cell membrane. So if you are looking at this cell, um, S, which is on the outside, would then be the cell membrane. So many learners, they didn't get that right. They, they, they twisted the, their answers there. Then T is just pointing in the space within the nucleus, so that would be the fluid in the nucleus, which is called the nucleoplasm. Two organisms where meiosis occurs, you can have for, um, for animals. It says in the animals, so you can't mention it, things in the plant. So it would be the ovaries, which are in the females. And then it would be the testes in the males. So those are your organs, the ovaries and testes. So let us move to the next uh, question or the, or the misconceptions that we got. Um, you can also get um, questions asking you, okay, my rubber is not wanting to work. Um, so here, in the same diagram, you can be asked to label the other parts, um, such as um, the site connecting the two chromatids of a chromosome. Those are the things that you could be asked, or how many chromosomes would be found at the end of meiosis one and at the end of meiosis two. So if we're looking at this diagram, this is prophase one. So by the end of meiosis one, we would have three chromosomes there in each of the two cells that are formed. Then in, um, in the end of meiosis two, it will still remain as, two, as three chromosomes. You could be asked to draw a diagram of this cell during metaphase two. So that's why you need to have your, all your tools there to be able to draw um, diagrams, that is your pencils and, 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 and your rulers and things for you to be able to, uh, to draw. Now let us look at the karyotype. The karyotype, um, it forms part of genetics, but we can also link it to meiosis. 
because during the process of meiosis, um, when abnormal meiosis occurs, we get um, non-disjunction, which means that the chromosomes uh, or the chromatids, they fail to separate during anaphase one or during anaphase two. So which will then result in the gametes or the cells that are produced to have an extra chromosome. So if you look at this diagram, it is, the, it is telling you that it is the diagram of a human male karyotype. So immediately they say it's that of a male. What do you look for? You look for the pair number 23 which we refer to as the gonosomes. So at pair number 23, you can see that your chromosomes, they are not of equal size. You've got a big chromosome, which is your X chromosome, and you've got a smaller chromosome, which is your Y chromosome. So that would be indicating that this person is a male, right? Now, let's go to the questions. Then you will see that it says name the origin of chromosome X in pair number 23. Where would that chromosome have come? Remember, during fertilization, it's an egg that fuses with a sperm cell, so it would have come from an ovum nucleus, the nucleus of an ovum of the mother. But you can't just say it came from the mother. Where in the mother it came from? It came, it came from the ovum nucleus, right? How many autosomes are found in the karyotype above? Now your autosomes, they are the chromosomes that are found at positions one to 22 in the karyotype of your human uh, being. Now, if you count how many chromosomes are there? You will also notice that there by number 16, there is an extra chromosome. So if they are in pairs throughout, that means that you will now have 45 chromosomes. It's supposed to be 44 if it is normal, but you can see here that there is some trisomy happening at position 16. We are used to trisomy at position 21, but this cell is showing us that there is a trisomy at position um, 16 where you have got an extra chromosome there. And then it says, how many cells will carry the Y chromosome at the end of meiosis? Okay, how many cells will carry the Y chromosome at the end of meiosis. Now, these are your gonosomes. So you've got the X and the Y that goes to the one, uh, um, one gamete and the, and the Y goes to the other gamete. It means that out of the four cells that will be formed, there will be two that will be carrying the Y chromosome, okay? And the other two that will be carrying the X chromosome. Then it says, explain the events that led to the number of chromosomes in number 16. That is now, you've got an extra pair of chromosomes there. Um, okay. So let us look at what would be the answer for there. Um, let me just erase what is over there so that we can see clearly. So we can see that at number 16, there are three chromosomes instead of two, which means that what happened? Non-disjunction occurred, right? Non-disjunction occurred, which is a failure of homologous chromosomes to separate there by position um, 16, and that happened during anaphase one. So remember, this is now an application of what we already know. We usually talk about the Down syndrome, which happens when we have got an extra chromosome at position 21. So the gamete has an extra position at, posi at position 16. That is, it has got 24 chromosome. And when this gamete will fuse 
with a, a, a normal gamete, then you will have a zygote that will have three chromosomes at position 16 instead of two. So it's not something new, it's something that you already know about Down syndrome, but you are applying it to this uh, scenario. Let's quickly do this one. This is another karyotype. It shows a gamete of an individual. And here, it's a gamete. Now, when it is a gamete, what is important for you to know is that now you are not having uh, in a gamete, um, your chromosomes are not in, not in pairs, right? They are not in pairs because they will be in pairs when they fuse together during um, fertilization. But if you look at position 23, can you see there that we are not having one chromosome, but we are having two chromosomes. Now it says name the type of mutation. So the type of mutation, we can see that it happened here in, at, at, at position 23. So it is a chromosomal where you have got an extra chromosome there. So it's a chromosomal mutation, right? What type of gamete is represented in the karyotype? Um, it is the male. I would say it's the male because you look at the size of this X chromosome. It's smaller than the other one there. So which means that that would be the uh, representing the Y chromosome. Um, in this gamete, give the number of autosomes. So here, these are all your autosomes from number one, number up to date, up to number 22. Those are all your autosomes. So that means that in this one, you are having 22 autosomes. And how many gonosomes you are having? You are having two, which means that this cell has a total, or this gamete has got 24 chromosomes. Now it says, if this gamete fuses with a normal gamete, using XY representation, write the chromosomes the sex chromosomes of the offspring. So now it fuses with a normal gamete and we have said that it is the X, Y. So then it would fuse with the female gamete and it would fuse with one X from the female. So it, your, your gamete notation would be X, X, Y, right? Okay, and that is the end of our lesson. We will carry on with genetics in our next lesson. Remember to write your questions in the comment uh, section so that we can give you feedback on anything that was not clear during the lesson. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll skip that one. Let me see.